Oh, the skim from home's now. Not late. Hmm. You know, I, I just want to make a little video about home's now, not later's mission. Our mission's pretty simple. Build tiny homes to house homeless people. You know, homelessness means without a home, period. I know a lot of people think all the homeless out there are drug and alcohol addicts or mentally ill. And you know, we got to stop that myth. 80% of the homeless in Whatcom County aren't mentally ill or have drug and alcohol problems. They're homeless. And the other 20% are still homeless. Drug and alcohol and mental health are totally, totally, and I'll say it one more time, totally separate problems. People that are housed have the same problems. So, uh, you know, I keep hearing the city talk about housing first. Well, then let's do it. How, how much longer are we going to talk about it? When are we going to start actually doing it? You know, I've been told honey get, gets more than vinegar, but my dad raised me and squeaky wheel gets grease. And I'm going to squeak really loud because I'm, I'm really frustrated. I'm angry. Uh, for the last four months, we've been trying to get the city to let us build tiny homes in Billingham. And just today, Michael Wilchrist said that, well, we can build. We just got to file for the permits and all that. Do you know the permits and all that will cost more than a tiny home? I mean, I... I understand safety. Maybe if you go out to Lumney and see what we're building and realize that the tiny homes that we built on Lumney were inspected and passed inspections, maybe it put some of your fears to rest. I don't know. It seems like because Homes Now Not Later isn't part of the nonprofit clique or we're not going along to get along. The ruffling feathers. We want to solve homelessness. We don't want to have a bunch of excuses why it can't be solved because it can be solved. It takes willpower, people. It takes people stepping up. It takes people getting involved. And if you don't have time to donate to help build, you don't have time to. You don't have money to donate. You don't have whatever. At least make the effort and write a letter to your city council member, your, your county council member, and let them know that you want homes now to be able to build. It's not rocket science, people. For $4,000, we can house a homeless person. $4,000. I would almost guarantee you the city of Billingham and Whatcom County spend about twenty to thirty thousand dollars per homeless person per year. If you add up law enforcement contact, fire department contact, ER visits, all kinds of things, court costs, and all that. I mean it'd be so much cheaper to house them and people say I've seen it all over Facebook today and for the last four months. Yeah, but we gotta get them in treatment first. No. What is the point of sending somebody to treatment if when they're done with treatment, they're still homeless? I'll say that again. If we spend some money to send somebody to treatment, and then when they're done with treatment, they're back out on the streets, did we just set that person up to fail? Yep, we did. 
and it would get a person into counseling for their mental health and get the meds and stuff and they're still living on the street. I challenge any one of you to go live on the streets and try to stay sane. It's uh, pretty impossible. My other question is, what about the people that are working 40 hours a week and still are homeless? You know, the government's failed the people, society's failed the people. All I hear is roadblocks and why we can't and why we can't solve homelessness. Homelessness isn't that hard to solve. Homelessness is being without a home, period. So if you house them, guess what? You solve the homelessness. When we started four months ago, Doug and my dream was to house 800 people by 2020. That's how many people the Whatcom County Coalition on Homeless says there are in Whatcom County. And I, me and Doug both think it's probably more like 1,500, 2,000. So, you know. All we want to do is house people. I don't know what's so hard about that. I don't understand why people have such a problem with that. But it gets really frustrating. You know. And I made a video earlier last week about we're changing gears. Uh, because we're, we want to buy a piece of property. Uh, we want to buy... A half acre to an acre worth of land, so we're thinking fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars we gotta raise. So that's that's kind of where we're at. But until we can start building, we're gonna do whatever we can to help the homeless, and we're gonna advocate, and we're gonna empower the homeless to speak up for themselves. One of the things that we want to do is get them warm weather gear so they don't freeze to death this winter or they don't get pneumonia and die or you know they're human beings they're somebody's brother mother sister daughter aunt uncle grandmother grandfather i mean what is what is so bad about wanting to house the homeless I hear people bitch all the time about they're tired of seeing the homeless in downtown. They're tired of homeless people panhandling. Well, then how about let's house them? Seriously. What is so hard about that? What, do you, what problem with that do you have? I, I get so frustrated and so emotional about it because being formerly homeless I understand how rough it is out there every day and it's getting rougher and the reason it's getting rougher is because the message that's being put out there whenever you hear anything in the news about the homeless or that it's always the needles in the park the bike chop their chopper bikes up uh, uh, they're loitering, they're pissing in the alleys. I mean, if you gotta go to the bathroom, you gotta go to the bathroom. And it's one thing that human beings have to do daily. I just, I don't understand how the city can justify $300,000 a year to clean up homeless camps, but let's change that word. To do homeless camp sweeps. Because what they do is they throw everybody's shit away. How would you like somebody coming to your house with a dump truck and throwing everything that you own inside your house into the back of the dump truck and hauling it to the dump? That's what these homeless sweeps are doing or cleanups as the city calls them. And they spend $300,000 to do it. And if they gave, if they spent three hundred thousand dollars on tiny homes, that would build almost a hundred tiny homes. 
that'd be 100 people not on the street. And there's 800, that'd be an eighth of the homeless population gone. So, you know, I, I just, I can't stress enough. They got this homeless task force. Are there any homeless people on the task force? Are there any formerly homeless people on the task force? Or is it a bunch of politicians and business owners and social workers on the task force? You know, homes now, not later, his whole motto is just do it. We're tired of talking about, we're tired of hearing other people talk about, we're tired of hearing the city and the county talk about the homeless problem. And here we are, a nonprofit registered with the state and the federal government, asking to build. Tiny homes isn't the total solution, but damn, it's part of the solution. It's an immediate thing. We, when I was homeless, the one thing I used to say all the time is, God, I'm tired of my shit getting stolen when I go look for a job or when I go to work. I mean, if you're homeless, you got to lug all your, your house around with you, basically. Or you stash it in the weeds, and then somebody finds it and steals it. And then when you get home from work, you got no place to sleep. you got no nothing to keep warm. you got no clean clothes. Nothing. Everything you own is gone. And if you had a tiny home, you could keep your shit in the tiny home, lock the door when you leave, and when you come back, lay down in a bed and sleep. Imagine how less stressful your life would be. Or imagine this. Imagine how stressful your life would be, you that are housed, if you didn't have a safe, stable place to go. And the mission is not stable. And from what we hear from the homeless population, it's not safe. And you all can say, bullshit. Well, come up to our summits and talk to the homeless people. And ask them what they think of the mission. And how safe they feel at the mission. Yesterday at the Homeless Summit, I sat and talked to a lady named Michelle and asked her how she became homeless. And her response was, well, my boyfriend I was living with was inviting his friends over and forcing me to have sex with him. And I didn't want to play that game anymore, so I left. And now I'm homeless. So I ask you, she doesn't use drugs. She doesn't drink. As far as I can tell, she didn't have a mental illness. So, is she one of those that doesn't deserve to be housed? Until she gets treatment? She doesn't need a case manager. She needs a safe, stable place to live. How hard is that to comprehend, people? Are we serious? Do we really want to house the homeless or do we just want to feel good and say, hey, I want to help the homeless? Yesterday at the summit, I saw people that would probably never talk to me in a public space come and volunteer and serve their homeless food and that. And we served about 100 to 150 homeless people. And they were so grateful, so respectful to us. And when I talked to the volunteers after it was over with, they were so impressed with how the homeless people acted. That's why we do these summits. We're trying to change the narrative. Homeless people aren't failures. Just because you're homeless doesn't mean you're a failure. It means a life-altering situation happened that brought you there. What is a failure is our government and our society the way we treat the less fortunate. I just ask you to get involved. Go to homesnow.org. Go to 
Homes Now, Not Later Facebook page. Go to Homes Now Billingham uh, Facebook group. Donate money if you can. Donate time. We're doing cold weather gear drives the rest of winter until April. Uh, if you need to know where to drop them off, get a hold of us. Send us a message on our page. Send us a message in chat. We respond to every message. Nothing goes unnoticed. If you got money, donate. If you got time, we can use it. We're not building now, but we need help uh, November 18th with our next homeless summit. Uh, we've decided that we're going to do pizza and then do cold weather gear. And we're going to have the building at Maritime Heritage Park, thanks to the city. And we're going to be handing clothes out in there and feeding pizza outside. And get involved. Come down. Actually talk to the homeless. Don't go by what the media tells you or what your elected officials tell you or what everybody else tells you. Come down and find out for yourself. You're not going to get beat up. You're not going to get robbed. Have a conversation with a homeless person. Talk to them. Ask them what they need. Don't go there assuming you know what they need because guess what? Assuming makes an ass out of you and me. The homeless will tell you what they need and what they want. You don't need to make that decision for them. Just like nobody makes a decision for you. Well, you only need this or you only want that. You have a free will. They have free wills. They're human beings. Like I said, there's somebody's father, mother, brother, sister, daughter, son, grandsons, grandpas, grandmas. They're human beings. Since when is we as society kick them when they're down? We should be lifting them up. Society has failed. And this pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Hey, that's all good and great. But you cut the bootstraps off a long time ago. Back when Reagan was around with his trickle down economics. Guess what? It never makes it down to the homeless, it never makes it down to the poor. And what we're going to see in Billingham and Whatcom County is more homeless. The mission's been serving the homeless for 94 years and still hasn't figured out how to solve it. You know, we don't need another 200 bed shelter that only houses people for 12 hours. So in the morning, you got to pack all your shit up and lug it around town again. And then we got to be in line at a certain time to make sure we get a bed the next night. How does that solve the problem? It perpetuates the problem. We need permanent solutions. And the first solution needs to be permanent housing and safe, affordable, stable housing. And tiny homes can be a big part of that. It doesn't take any time to build a tiny home. We can build 100 tiny homes in a couple months. And then we hear the city say, well, we're building apartments. My son works 40 hours a week at $11 an hour. He won't be able to afford any of those apartments. And then the landlords want you to prove that you make three times the amount of rent. So if the rent's $1,000, it's you got to make $3,000 a month. Well, my son doesn't make $3,000 a month, but he works 40 hours a week. So I guess your answer is, well, then he needs to get another job, or two, or three. Is that what we really want out of people? Just become working slaves? No. I, I don't know what it's going to take. It's common sense. It just doesn't seem like there's a lot of it in politics. You know, yesterday I was talking to a guy who walked up to me and he goes, Hey, can I talk to you? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, listen, I got approved for first and last month's rent and deposit. Some A group was going to help him. And I got approved to get help with my rent. But I can't find any place to rent. 
And I said, well, how much did they approve you to rent? And it's $750 a month. And I'm thinking, wow. And I think my exact words were to him, see, they gave you $750 a month to make you feel good, knowing damn well you ain't going to find any place in this town for $750 a month. Maybe the city needs to look at building some SROs. Oh, maybe they don't even know what they are. Single residency occupancy. Like downtowns used to be above the businesses. They used to have apartments above the businesses that were pretty cheap. A lot of retired people or uh, poor people could live up there and they were affordable. Those are all gone now because they turned all those into like condominiums. The gentrification of downtowns. You know, there's simple solutions. If we can find $110 million to build a jail, I'm sure we can find money to build a big SRO. If there's 800 people homeless in Whatcom County, then building an 80-unit apartment building doesn't do shit. We need to build 800 units and set Every one of them aside for the homeless, for the low-income people. Every one of them. Not just 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever the percentage is. Every one of them. We need to stop building apartments that are for profit and start building some apartments that aren't for profit but for housing. And we need to start letting homes down out later, build some damn tiny homes in Billingham and Whatcom County. I just don't understand what they don't agree with that. They don't trust us. We haven't proven ourselves. We built out on Lumley. We proved ourselves. Ask Nick Lewis or Aaron Thomas. The stepping stones. We proved it worked. So I'm going to shut up, and I'm just going to beg you to get involved. In this video, I'll put links to our website, to our Facebook page, into our Facebook group. We're also on Twitter. We have GoFundMe. We have Patreon. You can write us a check. We have a bank account. We're all legit, and only 5% of our money that we raise goes to administration. The rest of it goes to either building the houses or feeding the homeless and getting more mother gear, whatever it takes. You know, if we can't build, we're not just going to sit on our money. We're going to use it to help the homeless. That's what Homes Now Not Later is about. Homes Now Not Later is two people, me and Doug. We don't take any money. We do this because it's the right thing to do. And if you think it's the right thing to do, please contact us. We'd love to have you get involved with us. You know? And I know these videos are long and uh, it seems like I'm angry. Well, you're right. I am angry and I am frustrated. But I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to go away. I'm not going to fall in line. I'm going to do what's the right thing to do. And I'm going to fight my ass off for the homeless. And I don't care if they're addicted. I don't care if they're alcoholics. I don't care if they're mentally ill. They still deserve a house. Because you get them in the house and get them stable, it'll ease the stress. It'll ease the need to use a substance to numb the pain from being homeless. It'll make your mental health a little bit better because you're not all stressed out about where am I going to eat? Where am I going to sleep? What am I going to do when it rains? What am I going to do when it snows? What am I going to do when the cops come? So please get involved. Homes Now Not Later on Facebook. Homes Now Billingham on Facebook. And homesnow.org on the web. Thank you. Have a great day. Hope to see people respond to this and make comments. Because, you know, with without people's involvement, we're just spinning our wheels. So please get involved if you can.